On the other hand, Hui Hui, after sleeping for three full days, woke up refreshed and quickly returned to his training. Meanwhile, within the following seven days, Xuan Yu dedicated himself to cultivating at the Sea God Lake. His hard work paid off as he advanced to level 28, marking another important step in his progress. In the academy classroom, the quiet hum of focus filled the air as Lei, sitting just behind Xuan Yu, leaned forward towards him. He suggested they head out after school for a bit of fun, as he complained that he was feeling bored, and it was important to balance practice with some relaxation. Xuan Yu hesitated for a moment as he felt unsure about this sudden invitation to play. But Lei wasn't one to give up easily. He quickly mentioned that Liu Feng had already refused and called him dull for always turning down such offers. Turning his attention back to Xuan Yu, he asked if he would be more willing to join him instead. Xuan Yu sighed quietly, torn between sticking to his routine and giving in to Lei's whims. As he sensed his friend's reluctance, Lei tried a different approach. He told Xuan Yu that some of the seniors had been buzzing about an auction happening today and hinted that it might be worth checking out. The thought of something intriguing finally caught Xuan Yu's interest, and he agreed to go along. Amidst the vibrant greenery, Xuan Yu's eyes met Xiu Xu's in a brief, silent exchange. As they walked through the lobby, Xuan Yu mentioned that he and Lei were planning to head out later that evening. They intended to visit an auction in Shrek City and invited Xiu Xu and Menkin to join them. But the girl's response was straightforward. They were occupied tonight and couldn't make it. Lei encouraged them to come along, as he pointed out that the auction would be worth their time. Xu Xu asked Xuan Yu if he wasn't supposed to be focusing on his cultivation today. He responded with a relaxed smile that everyone deserved a break now and then, even from cultivation. When she turned to Meng Kin for her opinion, Xu Xu found her in a grumpy mood. Meng Kin didn't want to go, but expressed concern about Xu Xu going alone with Xuan Yu. Her worry stemmed from the thought of Xu Xu being taken advantage of by him, whom she saw as a troublemaker. However, she reluctantly agreed to accompany them to keep an eye on things. Xiu Xiu reassured Meng Kin that Xuan Yu was merely a junior to her, more like a little brother. They were all still young, so there was no need to worry too much. Meng Kin teased Xuan Yu as she repeated Xiu Xiu's words that he was seen more like a brother than a close friend. She reminded him that their relationship wasn't as close as he might think. Xuan Yu responded that a brother should be close to his sister. He suggested they all meet up again after their classes. As he said this, a shadow crossed his face as he reflected on the term brother, which seemed to weigh on him. As the afternoon sun shone brightly, Menken, who stood alongside Xu Xu, wondered aloud about their destination. Lei announced as he approached them with Xuan Yu that they were heading to the food street for a tasty treat. As evening descended, they strolled through the lively food street, where the air was filled with the mouth-watering scents of various dishes. Lei commented on how the street offered an impressive variety of food, which made it tough to choose. He then turned to the girls and asked for their preferences. Xiu Xiu glanced at Xuan Yu and felt that he seemed a bit different today. When they arrived at the roasting bird shop, they asked about the shop's specialties. The staff explained that the shop served a range of roasted meat and poultry, including chicken gizzards, hearts, breasts, and thighs. They quickly decided and ordered 20 skewers, with each person getting five. As they dug in, Qian Lei praised the deliciousness of the food, and everyone else agreed. Happy with their meal, they placed another order. As the soft light of morning broke through the sky, they arrived at the auction site. The man at the reception greeted them and explained that for that day's bidding, they could use Shrek insignias to make their payments. Qian Lei asked how the insignias are in comparison to Federation coins, and the man explained that a white insignia was valued at 10,000 coins, a yellow insignia at 200,000, and a purple insignia at 2 million. That was the extent of what he knew though he added that insignias were greatly favored there, and in private transactions, their worth tended to be even higher. In the bustling auction hall of Shrek Academy, the atmosphere buzzed with anticipation. Seated among the crowd, Zhuan Yu's eyes drifted across the surroundings as someone questioned his presence. As he turned his gaze, he spotted Tang Yu settled nearby. With a nervous smile, he greeted her and mentioned that they too were there for the auction. Yu inquired about Hui Hui as she asked if he did not come and how he was doing. She had heard that he had fallen into a coma after their last battle, and she wondered if he had awakened. Zhuan Yu hesitated before responding that he had indeed woken, but was now secluded in his room, focused on cultivation. As he spoke, he wondered if her worry for Hui Hui signified something more, though he knew she had never been particularly fond of him. She nodded understandingly, while Lei commented that Yu had warmed up to them. Meng Kin agreed and noted that, as a senior, her demeanor was naturally more considerate. Xuan Yu wondered that there seemed to be a trace of concern for Hui Hui and her behavior. At that moment, a voice from the stage broke through the murmurs as they welcomed everyone to the Shrek auction. The announcer highlighted the allure of the monthly large-scale event, which drew numerous bidders. 
Lei's curiosity was increased as he watched the proceedings and noticed a familiar face on stage. It was Ling Yi Yi, the very counselor from the entrance examination. As she expressed her gratitude to the attendees on behalf of the auction house, Xuan Yu caught her gaze fixed on him. He forced a smile as he found her attention amusing and thought to himself that she should stop staring. Without further ado, Yi Yi announced the commencement of the auction and invited everyone's attention to the large screen before them. As the screen flickered to life, she introduced the first item, the Centennial Heaven Luo Fruits. These fruits, she explained, hailed from the exclusive orchards of Shrek Academy and were of the highest caliber. Lei leaned towards Xuan Yu and mentioned that he had never heard of such fruits before. As Xuan Yu also looked puzzled, a nearby voice interrupted them as they got surprised at their lack of knowledge about such extraordinary treasures. Both Xuan Yu and Lei were shocked to see Tang Yug seated beside them. She wondered what they were doing at the auction and mentioned a book called Encyclopedia of Heaven and Earth Treasures, which could be bought for a white insignia. She suggested they read it in their free time, and they thanked her for the tip. The bidding began at 100,000 Federation coins, with increments set at 10,000. As the auction progressed, the bids intensified. VIP number 398 raised the stakes to 170,000, followed by VIP number 124 at 180,000. The competitive spirit heightened as VIP room number 7 on the second floor pushed the bid to 190,000. Yuge advised Zhuan Yu to place his bid early if he was interested in any item. As the Shrek students usually faced fewer competitors, he appreciated the suggestion. The auction continued with a dazzling array of items, leaving the first-time attendees overwhelmed. When the seventh item was introduced, Tang Yuge's successful bid of 180,000 was announced. Xuan Yu observed that while the items were impressive and their prices reasonable, his knowledge of the auctioned goods remained limited. He considered purchasing the book Yuge recommended. His attention shifted abruptly as Yi Yi introduced the next item. With its origins and properties covered in mystery, it was described as one of a kind, with no detailed introduction available. She urged everyone to look at the screen closely as the image of a water drop shaped gemstone appeared, its striking beauty and unusual nature immediately captivating. Dubbed the Nine Colored Gem, the gemstone was said to induce a sensation of energy fluctuation wherever it touched. As the staff wheeled the gem onto the stage, Xuan Yu's interest was piqued. Yi Yi explained that due to the gem's unique qualities, they would first present it for viewing before opening the bid. As she revealed the gemstone, Xuan Yu felt a weird reaction from the distance, as his mind got tangled with a mix of confusion and unease. He wondered why he felt such a strong response, and struggled to understand a desire he had never experienced before. Yi Yi announced that without further delay, she would reveal the gem. She then carefully removed the cloth covering it, and the crowd watched intently as the sparkling treasure was unveiled. She proclaimed that the bidding for this precious item was now open, starting at 200,000 Federation coins, with each subsequent bid to be no less than 10,000 coins. Mencken voiced her concern that if this gemstone was merely for decoration, the starting bid of 200,000 Federation coins was excessive. Zhuan Yu, however, with a steely resolve, raised his hand to place the initial bid of 200,000 Federation coins. This move surprised Lei, who looked at him in shock. Meng Kin, puzzled by Xuan Yu's decision, remarked that whether the gem was metal or gemstone, its value was questionable unless it held some form of energy. She suggested to Xu Xu that perhaps he was merely trying to purchase it for her. Xu Xu, however, advised her to refrain from such speculation, as he might be aware of the gemstone's true value. Meng Kin countered that even the most advanced devices could not detect any special properties, so what he could possibly know... She said that 200,000 Federation coins, equivalent to 20 white insignias, was an extravagant sum. As Xu Xu reflected on her own preferences for white and blue hues, she wondered whether to discourage Xuan Yu from spending so much. Yet she also considered the possibility that if he was not bidding to buy it for her, it would be rather embarrassing. As she looked intently at the gem, she noticed a vibrant energy surrounding it. The gem, with its colorful teardrop shape, seemed familiar, as though she had seen it before. Her attention then shifted to Xuan Yu, and she started to wonder about his identity. Suddenly, another bidder offered 210,000 for the gem. Xuan Yu looked over and recognized the boy as a senior student. As the auction staff began to call out the bid, the senior suggested that his friend would really like the gem, and proposed that perhaps Xuan Yu should let him get it instead. Xuan Yu responded calmly that his own friend also had a strong interest in the gemstone. Meng Kin and Xu Xu curiously listened closely to the exchange between them. The senior then addressed Xuan Yu as he mentioned that they were alumni and advised him not to compete with them. He recognized Xuan Yu's connection with Yuge and remarked on his generous spending that he must be wealthy. 
but Xuan Yu without hesitation raised his bid to 220,000 coins. This surprised the onlookers who wondered why the Shrek students, known for their unity, were suddenly in conflict. The senior countered with a bid of 300,000 coins and warned him that if he bid a little higher, he would lose. He insisted that his friend's disappointment would be unavoidable if he lost. Xuan Yu got to his feet, and all of a sudden a strong energy radiated from him, which grabbed the attention of the senior students. They recognized the impressive strength of his bloodline. With a firm and cold tone, he placed a final bid of 310,000 coins. The staff began the countdown, and the gem was eventually sold to Xuan Yu. As he sat down, he sighed and complained about how the senior's actions had forced him to spend an extra 110,000 Federation coins. He worried about the diminishing number of white insignias he had. Meanwhile, Xu Xu began to tremble as she felt uneasy, and told Meng Kin that she had a headache and wanted to head out early. She asked her to continue enjoying the auction without her. Meng Kin, concerned about Xu Xu's sudden discomfort, wondered if she might be upset with Xuan Yu. As he heard their conversation, Xuan Yu decided to accompany her as he added that since he had spent so much on the gem, he probably would not bid on anything else. Meng Kin agreed and asked him to take good care of her. As they walked, Xu Xu followed behind Xuan Yu with her steps heavy and her face clouded with worry. Xuan Yu turned to ask if she was okay, but she didn't respond. Her head was down and her eyes looked worried as she seemed deep in thought. The image of the golden scales and the teardrop-shaped gem kept flashing in her mind with their bright colors standing out sharply. She recalled the face that had seemed oddly familiar when they first met, and wondered about Xuan Yu's true identity. Her mind raced with questions as she tried to piece together the mystery of who he really was. Under the night sky, Xu Xu looked at Xuan Yu with a mix of curiosity and doubt as she asked if his name was really Lan Xuan Yu. He got taken aback and asked what she meant by that. She pressed on and asked him again if his last name was actually Lan. Xuan Yu felt puzzled and wondered why his surname should be Lan. Xu Xu, as she silently lost in thoughts, shook her head as if to clear her mind. She quietly said that her head was throbbing and that she must be overthinking things. She suggested they should head back. With that, they both turned and walked away and left the unanswered question behind them.